Welcome to Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. I'm your host, Dave West, codename Phantom O Troublemaker. And I am your co-host, Noel Wood, codename Leprechaun Shoot. I don't know. I didn't think of anything clever. <laughs> Leprechaun and- shoot. <laughs> Leprechaun. And I am your Cobra intern who stole all the marshmallows out of the Lucky Charms. Codename Legion Cub. You son of a. Leprechaun shoot. Living on sounds- a sugar rush. <laughs> Leprechaun shoot sounds like uh, somebody who's not sure which body part they're going to lose next. <laughs> uh, I think it's all right, given the drink we need to create by Joe Fest. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Uh, given the day and given that we all enjoy a good beverage, I thought we'd kick this episode off with a little bit of an Irish blessing or an Irish toast, really. Uh, everybody will raise your glasses. May those who love us, love us. And those who don't love us, may God turn their hearts. And if he can't turn their hearts, may he turn their ankles so we will know them by their limping. I think that's a very audible interlude sentiment. You can find more audible interlude sentiments on Instagram at audible interlude podcast and on X at G I Joe audible and wherever you listen to this show. If you're listening to an audio episode right now on your local podcasting system, I say that like it's networks. (laughs) Hang on. I've got a, this is no good. This is, this is a child's like dollar tree uh St. Patrick's Day hat. That's not gonna work for me. There we go. Now I'm feeling better. A little skeletron in the house. I'm sure they enjoy a good uh there, beverage. That's as not well. subtle product placement. No, not in, no, it's not subtle product uh product <laughs> placement. You are correct. Uh so wherever you listen to your podcasts, whether it's uh Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever the place is, give us a rating and uh also follow us press that little button that says follow uh it's very helpful to our uh, everything that we're trying to do here uh we cannot grow without your help and speaking of growing audiblearmy.com is the place for all the audible interlude you can handle uh for one dollar and 99 cents a month that's it there's only one tier you get my show notes before each episode is released early and ad-free access to all audio episodes, exclusive video access to recordings of audio episodes, early access to all G.I. Joe reviews on the Needless Things YouTube channel, the opportunity to vote for content for the show, early access to Audible Interlude merch, and all kinds of other stuff. Check out audiblearmy.com. Like I said, it's $1.99 a month. Uh, Go check it out. And speaking of... Uh, My review for the 60th anniversary uh, action soldier went up this past week on the Needless Things YouTube channel, which is where you are right now. Uh, You can check that out, but audiblearmy.com got early access to that. Uh, I also reviewed the Action Force Pandora figure. Uh, Thank you to everybody who hipped me to the fact that I had messed up my edit and left some music in the middle of the review. It was terrible. I fixed it once and it turned out it wasn't fixed. So today I re-uploaded for a third time. Uh, So go check that out. And audiblearmy.com did get early access to this as well because I figured, well, I'll go ahead and throw G.I. Joe adjacent stuff in with the deal. We are constantly adding new things to this $1.99 a month. Uh, What else? What's what's, What's next on the slides? I'm trying to keep up. Oh, look at that. If you are a member of AudibleArmy.com, you can check out my review of Clutch and the Vamp right now. Well, not right now. Wait till the show's over. Um, But uh, get in there. Check out that review. This thing, we all got this, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you have to rub it in my face, don't you? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Clutch Clutch is sorry. What? uh, That beautiful face? What? Come on, no. Mine, at, mine, okay, some, wait, mine is to... somewhere between uh, presumably Kennesaw, Georgia, and my home, as it has been for the better part of three days now. Look at this beauty. I've got stuff that's getting ready. To, I've got all the helmets just sitting on it because I thought it looked cool just having them sitting there. This is a work of art. It is toy beauty 
uh, of of the highest order. It's actually a little size wise, Christian. It's a little bigger. It's a lot bigger actually than I thought. Like I I know I sound like a broken record every time they do this, but when you see it on the the streams with the Joe team, you're like. Yeah, that's a decent size. And then when well, you have a like... box show up to your house, it's like the size of a table. Well, on the You're streams, like, oh. it seems like, oh, yeah, that's that's about how big the vamp seems like it should be. But then you get it in hand. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's it is the size it should be. You just realize that is larger than you thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. But it's I have to say, I love it as much, if not a little bit more than the his tank. I'm with you on that. I have had so much fun playing around with it today. The look at that suspension, right? Delightful. So jealous. Well, you'll the, have it soon enough, and then the, guess the what? Delivery gods are not are not in my favor this well, week. You'll get yours, and you'll be like, "Hey, look, I've got this new thing to open, and you guys already opened yours, so I'm getting ready to have some fun." And then we'll be like, "Well, yeah, but we also received the eight newest Joe figures, <laughs> uh, so we'll be opening those uh, as well." All right, moving along. Check out Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram. Look at the pinned stories, and you can get yourself a T-shirt like the shirts that we are wearing or that some of us <clears throat> are wearing <laughs> right now. I have one green shirt. <laughs> this, this is the new Audible Interlo uh, Interlude Podcast logo designed by our pal Slickalicious. Check out Shop Slickalicious on Instagram, and it is so sick fresh dope that your homies are going to think you're whack if you're not wearing it you're crescent fresh oh i'm so <laughs> i'm so crescent fresh you don't even know uh did i tell you i recently bought the entire series on dvd yes. it's, no it's you a, did not it's an import i was gonna say it's, copy. it's definitely not an official hey, no i'm sorry please. it's not dvd it's blu-ray uh, oh but it's it's an import i'll send you a link uh, I also look at this, this Saturday, this Saturday, just a few days from now, you will have the opportunity to experience audible interlude live and in person at toy Lanta, uh, check out toylanta.com for more information on that. It is my favorite toy convention, uh, this Saturday, 12 30 PM, we will do, be doing a live episode and you may be wondering, well, well, what happens at a live recording of Audible Interlude? Well, you know we've got giveaways. You know we've got prizes. You know there's going to be a high level of audience interaction because we are going to determine the greatest team of all time. Voting has already started to fill the brackets at audiblearmy.com. So far, Iron Grenadiers, Night Force, and Python Patrol are locks to be part of the tournament. Uh, we will determine the rest of the brackets live at Toylanta, and then the audience will determine the greatest team of all time. So you can uh, so... be there to make sure your team wins, because we That's don't right. need another Crimson Guard moment oh my gosh yeah for, for those that don't know uh our live panel at dragon con a few years ago we did cobra commander sweetheart parade and it turns out that cobra commander sweetheart is the crimson guard that that is everybody's favorite troop builder according to 230 people at dragon con and since they were there and you weren't they got to decide That's canon so if that chaps your hide you better show up to a live recording so you can determine the outcome of these very, very important and widely regarded uh, polls. The chat is hopping tonight. We got Rexship85, Craig Dukas, uh, Legion Cub. Legion Cub and yeah. Tourier are in the chat. For those that don't know, Tourier is one of the, the many alternate identities of our own crapshoot. Uh, Will R is here. Kevin Riddle, this march is greener than normal. All these figures and vamp hitting is killing all my green. Yeah, no kidding. 
Uh, I stopped and looked for some shamrocks on my walk today because I could use a little little cash. I'll go, shamrocks don't get you pots of gold. They just get you luck. I should have been looking for leprechauns. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Rexship85 says it. Sick, fresh, dope. The five-star review of the AI podcast. Just That's all you got to do. If, if you want to write something funny, uh, do it. As a matter of fact, if you write something funny, um, screenshot it and send it to us at audible interlude podcast on instagram and and we'll read it on here if if, if you can if you can write a funny ridiculous review uh, as long as you give it the five stars it doesn't really matter what the words are uh that was probably a mistake that i will regret <laughs> right <laughs> sooner sooner <laughs> sooner than later uh, uh, well, we'll see what happens the we internet is the wild west uh audible interlude Podcast Hats version two will be available at Toylanta and later in the year at Joe Fest and well, maybe at Dragon Con. It, it'll depend on how it works out. If we sell out at Joe Fest, I'll have time to do another run for Dragon Con. But uh, if not, and we only have a couple of stragglers for Dragon Con, I'm not going to print up a whole new run. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So uh, get them at Toylanta is my recommendation. Toy Reclaimer in the house, as well as Yorktown Joe. Yeah, this is. So Yorktown Joe, so glad the vamp got here faster than the May 1st estimate. I we, We've been saying for quite some time now, it looks like Hasbro is is intentionally putting out later uh, than expected release dates. So when stuff comes early, it's fun and people don't get all mad. Al although it is still like, oh, I'm paying for this now, I guess. But <laughs> I'd rather that than something come two months late. <laughs> Where did Will R go? Maybe, maybe he swam away. Uh, oh boy. Sunday night. It's Sunday night. As <laughs> soon as you're done here, you can go check out our review of Duke number three. If you missed it, uh, we did a poll on audiblearmy.com and, and also just sort of in general on social media asking people, look, we love doing our classic vintage reviews of the old Deke Sunbow uh comic books everything else you led with deke come on <laughs> <laughs> you always have to lead with deke. i love deke i have come around <laughs> on the deke i i thoroughly embrace it uh but we, we we took the temperature of the room and people want to hear us talking about the current comic books so that's what we're going to be doing going forward now we will still be doing america's elite and instruments of destruction and let's freaking go ring and and you know the other segments but as far as our reviews we are going to be focusing on uh the current comics for for the near future at least uh what else have we got our next live stream april the first you guys, hmm, what happens on that day? April 1st, we have a live stream. <sighs> Look, it, you know how we roll. And I'll just say this. Be there. You don't want to miss our April 1st live stream. I might take the next day off. Just put it on your calendar right now and be ready for April the 1st. Uh, speaking of our audio episodes, which you get access to early and ad-free if you're a member of AudibleArmy.com, our last audio episode had the most slides ever <laughs> of any Audible interlude episode. And I, I post that to let you know how much work I'm putting into these audio episodes where the video is exclusive to AudibleArmy.com. We had a multimedia cavalcade this last episode if you've listened to the audio you probably have an idea of what the visuals might have been like but i gotta tell you for a dollar 99 just jump on even if it's just for a month you don't have to stay subscribed if you're like you know what this isn't really worth less than two dollars a month uh but check out this ep at the last episode where we reviewed revenge of the pharaohs you gotta watch it you, i mean you honestly watch finding out that that's their actual face <laughs> is worth a dollar 99 a month uh so so yeah that episode i i will honestly say that was one of our best episodes ever 
And then over here on his tank, they are doing March Madness voting. Now, HisTank.com, we enjoy his tank for the fan interaction, for the uh, variety of opinions about Joe, and just for the news and information. And right now, they are doing a March Madness vote. Uh, just It's not official, but just to determine what people want to see in the classified line. And these brackets are brutal. <laughs> uh, take a closer look uh, on HisTank.com. We're not going to run down everything right now, although we may talk about it this coming Saturday, depending on how we are on time. This could be a fun sort of extra audience activity. But there's some stuff in there that's, that is killing me if it were real decisions. Uh, Iron Grenadiers Destro versus Crystal Ball. I don't want to make that decision. <laughs> oh, uh, I think that's an easy one. Well, it's an easy it's an easy one because Crystal Ball is a must have. We already have mini exactly. Destros. Uh, wetsuit versus Mercer. That one kills me. Yeah, because you got Special Mission Brazil versus X Cobra guy. Like, I don't. I that's difficult. I but I cannot vote against Special Mission Brazil. So anyway, everybody go check out on his tank uh, these voting brackets. It's a lot of fun, uh, and some of these matchups are are just like I said, brutal. Well, looking at it, it makes me realize how many figures we still have to come because you know they're going to get around to doing all these at some point. Considered and some I, of the right. deep well, that's, Yeah, done. exactly. So and my wallet we, just hurts looking at it. <laughs> we've moved on from the Joe website because obviously they've moved on from it. But to see that <laughs> there's more people still popping up after all these years. People, wah, wah. Those, really those Scorpion and Sci-Fi, the ones that were on the original relaunch page mm -hmm. that we have not seen hide nor hair from yet. I always forget Sci-Fi was on there. Yeah. Well, Sci-Fi was in Operation Blackout. Like his classified yeah. design was a done deal, and I think it just it it happened where they veered away from the Blackout designs, and he was just kind of a casualty of, of that decision. I feel like his figure would have been right around the corner. Uh, Rec ship 85. One of y'all has got some nose whistles going on. That might be me. And uh, Kevin Riddle says, and we thank you for it. Really enjoying them. So it just goes to show just like GI Joe, there's something for everyone. If you want nose whistles, we got them for you. I, I think he's talking about the Deke reviews. Oh, are there nose whistles going on in the deep? No, 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 no. You were talking about the the slides for the uh, Revenge of the Pharaohs when Kevin posted. Kevin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think he's just so oh, oh, us okay. I thought he was thanking us for the nose whistles, but <laughs> but you're right. He probably is talking about the the deke review. I mean, who doesn't uh, love a good nose it's, whistle? It's hard to run through the chat and determine who's responding to what. <laughs> clearly, uh, speaking of responses, we've got a little bit of news out here. Uh, if I can pop up our news banner, I've got too many banners now; they're hard to. Uh, navigate through but now it's time for a little bit of news so check this out uh, legends of the hidden force uh, who we have had on the show in the past and we're eagerly anticipating their line of martial arts oriented o-ring figures announced two new accessory packs the first one is uh, a set of bloody weapons which is pretty cool uh lots of the, they're all of their weapons utilize the same kind of interconnectivity as Lego studs. So you can put the axe blade on the pole. You can put the scythe blade on the axe. You've got Tonfa. You've got all kinds of interchangeable stuff. You can put blades on the nunchucks. You can put the nunchuck chain on the pole. It's nuts, all the stuff you can do. Uh, but this is, this is a bloody variation of a lot of their weapons. And they've got a second accessory pack. And this is the one I find really intriguing. They are battle stands christian you saw this i did i love the design of these stands be with the foot wedge so that you can actually put them on a stand in an interesting pose versus yes. just yearbook style like 
how nobody thought of this any it's what sooner blows my mind because it's like it's not anything i ever thought of and now as soon as i saw it i was like how have these not existed yet i, I mean it's ingenious and yeah i don't know why dynamic because you know for the 112 scale figures hasbro's done well everybody has done different types of stands to produce dynamic poses with those but o-ring figures are so much lighter mm -hmm. you can do a lot with so much less so i'm interested to see if they can come up with other types of dynamic stands uh to use with o-ring figures Lots of innovation coming out of Legends of the Hidden Force. I'm I'm really excited for those and, and to see what else those guys can come up with. In classified news, this is uh this is all the emails that came in all at once. Uh I got notifications from Big Bad Toy Store, uh, my personal favorite online toy retailer that the first three retros, which is Scarlet Duke and Rakondo, Metalhead, and the Techno Viper are shipping soon, or pr the pre-order is processing soon uh, from Big Bad, which usually means within a couple of days. Now, this came in on Friday, I think. So going across the weekend, I expect them to populate my pile of loot probably Monday. Uh, so very excited for that. But the pre-order roulette is coming in hot and heavy because the very next day, or was it today? Did the Pulse, Pulse stuff came in today, didn't I got it? Mine. Yeah, I got all mine today. Okay, so today we get from Hasbro Pulse, Techno Viper, Quick Kick, Big Boa, and Metalhead are shipping soon. So things are getting a little intense in on, on Dave's wallet as far as... Pricey deciding. and dicey. Yeah. Well, no, they're not being made yet, but I'm sure they're right around the corner. Uh, slice and dice. <laughs> uh, but one figure from that wave is missing, and I can't think off the top of my head who it is. Because Techno Viper, Quick Kick, Big Boa, and... So, is it Jinx? No, no Jinx is just that wave. We just got Jinx in the yeah. most recent pre-order. It was in the, the first week of December. I'll oh! Oh! No, yeah, Airborne. Airborne. Airborne, that was the one. Airborne's yep. the other one. They probably okay. want that one to ship around the time that the uh, Dragonfly is going out, or I at least close to it. I feel like that's a little people... ways off. No, I thought I was seeing, uh, unless they're getting the China special. Oh, people are definitely... But, but they're I, posting yeah. him on I, social. I, I have pegged which social media people uh, are clearly uh, ordering their stuff uh from outside of normal means and uh since i don't want to pay 90 dollars for a gi joe classified figure i just wait well for normal means. outside of normal means could be anything if i got a prey to cthulhu to get a figure <laughs> early i barely have a mind as it is i i can i can tell you right now posting a picture of airborne a week early is not going to have a significant enough impact on our numbers to be worth it <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We got a little follow up. So, Shockwave and the Night Force bike, Night Force Pursuit Cycle, I think it's called. Uh, so that went up for pre order on Thursday, and I did pre order it and then just completely blanked and didn't consider ordering from Pulse at all until like quarter after, and it was showing sold out. But then 45 minutes, like 12.45, right before it went on, because it was available uh, to premium members from noon to one. And then right before one, it went back up in stock. So I ordered one from Pulse as well. So but I thought I, have, I missed it. I have a new question about okay. this set. And it's because of Clutch and the Vamp. Mm -hmm. So the original Steel Brigade helmets, there's no head underneath there. Like it's the helmet that goes right on the peg right right it is and a head. clutches is a helmet a helmet that fits on most of your classified figures yeah so i'm wondering now if well the red visor version is let's going take to a look be... so this 
looks exactly like the one with Shockwave. I'm looking at the one that came. Whoop! I'm looking at the one that came with Clutch. I think the shape is a little different on the Steel Brigade one. Mm. Uh, but whatever the case, I do believe that's a helmet. Well, you know what? I bet we can look at his accessory loadout, and it'll say helmet or head, maybe. Does anybody else see this one in this image and want one in three other colors so we can have, like, G.I. Joe Ninja Turtles? Because that's what that looks like to me. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, I mean, especially the one that came with Clutch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one with the teeth on the side, that's 100% what that looks like. <laughs> uh, let's An see orange here. orange visor, a purple visor. A blue one. No, blue one. this just says 17 accessory pieces. It does not specify uh, if it's a, if, if I... Oh, wait. Alternate helmeted head. Hmm. Mm. So that sounds to me like that is the Steel Brigade type, head. where it's a head. Yeah. But clearly they've made changes in... Uh, from the initial listings before, because we're seeing which do what Doc is getting was not what was initially promised. Oh, well, mm -hmm. look, on top of that, with the vamp, um, in the instructions for the vamp, I wish I had them with me. I, I hadn't even thought about the possibility of doing this. It's in my review. Um, so in the instructions for the vamp, it shows these ammo boxes just sitting on the sides this ledge is not or this little shelf thing is not even in the instructions for the vamp so this was a late addition uh to the toy which is wild but yeah if, if you look at the blueprint or the, the instructions or whatever it is these are both just sitting here on the sides it's terrible I, as soon as i saw it i was like you got to be kidding me they're just gonna yeah. hang there loose well because yeah the way that it has like the arrow pointing like as if you were supposed to push them down or snap them into something. right that's what i thought i and figured that maybe they got rid of that for aesthetic reasons so like if you don't have those on there to give it that g1 look that you won't have pegs or whatever it was that those were going to sit in well if it if it well, what they should have, if they were going to do it that way, it should have just been shallow recesses that they could sit in. But True. the way that they did it, it works it's really fine. well. And if it didn't have that ledge, I wouldn't have put the ammo boxes on it. Nope. Because it would just look terrible. So, yeah, that was an interesting little tidbit. So, who knows what the helmet is. Uh, <laughs> that, Only the shockwave shock wave. knows. We'll, we'll find out in August. Uh, all right. I want to do a little follow up here. Now you got neither one of you guys got the 60th anniversary figures, right? The soldier no. and the sailor. Not yet. All right. Well, here we go then. Uh, the action soldier, which I reviewed, you can check out my review here on the needless things, YouTube channel. I gotta say it's, it is, it's a cool figure. It has to me, a lot of problems the the vest is so bulky and the pouches stick out so much that you can't do anything with his arms around the vest uh his backpack has the pegs to hang the guns on the trigger guard which i'm not a fan of but i recognize there's not really a lot of better solutions but the excuse me the firearms the blasters that he comes with don't fit on these pegs they're all loosey-goosey. They do not fit snugly on there. Uh, his deco is absolutely beautiful, accessory-wise. Like, he comes with a ton of cool stuff. Like, it's not a bad figure. It's a flawed figure, in my opinion. I, I just don't like this, and this has made me much less enthusiastic about Doc. Because I I just... That's I why want... I'm, I'm hoping that... What's what I'm looking for? Underneath the vest that Doc isn't unfinished. Because right. well, I and, can totally see myself removing it. And if you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Um, there's actually Tampo on his shirt under the vest mm -hmm. that you can't even really see. So they went to the mm -hmm. effort of putting Deco on this guy. 
I wouldn't mind taking the vest off, but I'm either going to have to take the figure apart or cut the vest. It does, it's not just coming off. Uh, but, but I mean, look, it still looks really cool. It just doesn't say G.I. Joe enough for me to be super happy about having it. Just my personal taste. Uh, and then as far as the... But it does say, hey, Valiverse folks, look what we got. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, look, that's that's a segment of the market they have to address. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. See, this the stuff has just fallen off of this guy left and right. Um, his dive board... I think is what some are swimming board. I don't know. Uh, I like the sailor a little more, but he, again, he's just got so much junk on him. That's just falling off all the time. He's so bulky, like posing him. He's just not, he looks cool, but he's not fun because there's just too much junk. He's very M E he's very modern era design. And that's not, I don't love that. It's not my favorite. So if you're into figure photography and being able to sort of give tons of different looks to your figures, then I think those are going to be solid picks. Like people are absolutely going to really dig those when they get their hands on them. But for me, there's just too much fidgety little stuff falling off all the time and getting in the way. Uh, I don't, I don't love it, especially after my accessory rant from last <laughs> week. Everybody knows how I feel uh, about that. 60th anniversary Joe designed by Rob Liefeld. <laughs> so what is what is you guys interest level in those? Are they purely if they hit clearance or if I happen to find one or just meh? I, I have no interest in the sh in the soldier whatsoever, but if there's a sale on the diver I'll get one. Yeah, the diver is my that one. I definitely dig more. I might. I'm gonna play around and see how much I can trim it down, how much stuff I can take off, and have it still look cool. And I wouldn't mind having a second one just so I can use both portraits. But we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I'd, if I. If this is one of those things that winds up at Ross for 10 bucks, that's probably like the only chance that I'd be picking it up. Yeah. And I'll be curious to see if that happens because I think, I mean, I've already seen uh, pictures on Instagram of people troop building these with like <laughs> six of them. So I, wow. I'm curious to see how that turns out if they do make it. Because I my guess is they produce these in large quantities because the loadouts are impressive. Like I said, for this one, you know, or like I said a couple months ago, you know, this one comes with the proper uh, firearm for roadblock. Uh, there's some other cool things in there. Granted, we've seen them before, but these are different colors. There, There is a lot to recommend these figures. And again, specifically troop building, figure photography. I don't know. I'll be curious to see if they make it to the, that's not really the secondary market. What do we call the closeout market? <laughs> I'll be interested to see if they make it to the closeout market. We could, we could see them by the dozens at Ross and Ollie's and wherever else. Uh, we'll keep an eye out. One more piece of news, something that I thought would be interesting conversation. So Hasbro is doing a panel at WonderCon in Anaheim. This is kind of an unprecedented thing because WonderCon is is a it's not like a media it's not like San Diego Comic Con or something like that. It's not it's not even like New York Comic Con. It's a different thing. <clears throat> and I don't believe Hasbro has had a presence there before. And mm -hmm. between this, well, okay, so when I added this to our show notes, I found it intriguing in that does this mean that Hasbro really sort of recognizes who their major market is now and that they need to cater to us a little bit more. And today with Emily's Instagram post that we'll get to in a minute, uh, asking for questions for Q and A's that they wanted to interact with the collectors more. 
I do think we're seeing signs of sort of a sea change at Hasbro where they're, they're recognizing the importance of adult collectors maybe or acknowledging the importance of adult collectors a little more. I, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be contrary because I think you're right. I just, I don't think Hasbro is looking at it as adult collectors. I think they're looking at it as the fans because it's a way when you do something like San Diego, you have all kinds of press there, right? You've got all the websites. It is a for more or less a press release con. Smaller cons like this, it reminds me of when like when Funko first started out and they showed up at MegaCon or they showed up at Dragon Con and it's you are now interacting with the people that are going right to the shelf to buy your product. You're not the bulk of who you're interacting with is not the people that are going to go back to their website to write about the figure that you sent them. Does that make sense? Right. But that's what I'm saying is I think when I say adult collector, I mean, when you're going to WonderCon, when you're talking to podcasters and streamers, you don't think you're talking to children. You, you understand you're talking to adult. Have you buyers. been online? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the discussion boards? Oh, you're talking to children, us included. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you get what I'm saying. This oh, yeah. is this is yeah. a different segment of the population that Hasbro is now approaching that they I... haven't really directly addressed a lot before, aside from some interaction with the Star Wars community. I think this is brilliant because the other thing in the early days of Megacon that I always noticed was that when you have one of the cons like this, where it's more fan based and you don't have lots of competing news, wow, does everything you say get reported on and it gets to hang out there for a bit longer versus, hey, an hour ago they showed a new Transformer, and now we're going to talk about this new X-Men line. And then an hour later, wait, now it's this. Like, I I really, really hope that, that Hasbro makes most of this. We'll see. We'll see what they do. I just thought it was an interesting thing. It seems to be different, and, and Hasbro seems to be taking a different approach. Uh, I did not have time to load this into the slideshow, so I'm going to have to read it off my phone here. Uh, so if you're following Emily from the Classified brand on Instagram, she's more phenomenal Emily uh, than you know. Earlier today, she posted a got questions picture. The G.I. Joe team has answers. And her message here was that herself, uh, Tony, and Lenny have been having so much fun chatting with fans lately that we thought it would be fun to give people another option to get some of their G.I. Joe questions answered. If you have a question about G.I. Joe, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to get some answers out there. Uh, and of course be reasonable, be polite. They're not going to tell you what's coming out next year. But again, this is very different. And at the end of this, if you run a podcast show and you'd like to have us on to ask questions there, that's great too. Just send me a DM to let us know you're interested and we can see what we can make that happen. Obviously, uh, Lenny's fandom for Audible Interlude will probably prevent him from coming on the show. I think he would probably get embarrassed and a little tongue-tied talking to us. So I totally understand if we're not a candidate for one of those appearances. But uh, being online, we were able to get a response to the question that I left uh, on Emily's post. Really more of a statement. Uh, and, and this shouldn't surprise anybody who's been listening to us for any length of time. I said, amongst the classified team, 
which is the favorite Joe sub team and why is it special mission Brazil? And Lenny answered, uh, special mission Brazil is pretty tight. You can't beat a Claymore and a cassette. If you watch the streams, they are all our favorite, but if I had to pick it's night force for me. So one Lenny is comfortable speaking with us via Instagram chat, not in person. I think again, in person, it would just, he, he, he wouldn't be able to handle, you know, being in our presence, but, uh, on Instagram, he gave us a response, and the piece of information there is that Night Force is his favorite, and I don't know that he's come right out and said that before. No, and it makes so much more make sense now. Well, right. It, the Dragonfly color scheme, the figures that are coming with it, the Night Force stuff that's coming out now being, uh, quite frankly, a little different from the rest of the line. The fact that we got Shooter and Wolf Spider and Night Force first... It, it does speak to if, if somebody is making the decision of we want to create a new character and we want to release a classic character that hasn't had a ton of representation, well, I'm going to put them in my Night Force because I'll tell you what, right now I would do the same thing with Special Mission Brazil. If I were running that line, Wolf Spider and Shooter would be in Special Mission Brazil and also we would have the entire Special Mission Brazil team by now, but that's another thing. All right. I do believe that's all the news we've got. It is time now to move on to a little, little special segment we came up with. Again, because of the day, uh, I wanted to try and come up with something, and, and the comments can absolutely get involved with this as well. But each of us have selected uh, five predominantly green G.I. Joe figures from our own personal collections uh, to share as our, our top five favorite green Joe figures in a segment that we're going to call Luck of the Greenish. And we have to say greenish because as easy as it is to find green G.I. Joe figures, <clears throat> like the ones that are recognizably all green don't tend to be the most exciting. <laughs> So, uh, luck of the greenish who wants to go first. We're just going to each share our five and go around. Uh, no need to stagger it out. Um, sure. I'll go. Why not? <clears throat> All right. No. So I guess Tell us your, your favorite green folks. I'll, uh, I'll start with this guy right here. You'll often see me wearing my dragonfly shirt. I do love me a good old yeehaw Wild Bill, who is, uh, I would say, aesthetically from the 83 line. He and Tripwire would be the two that probably fit best into the 82 Joe scheme. So that's why I always appreciated him. He he was, Dragon, Dragonfly was one of my you know early G.I. Joe toys. So, And enjoy. as we're going through this in the chat, tell us your favorite... Uh mostly your predominantly green joe figures from from anything real american hero 12 inch whatever tell us what you got so number four i think this might be on somebody else's list oh nice oh yeah good old copperhead many shades of green going on there with copperhead and yet another vehicle driver i'm gonna throw you guys for a loop real quick oh boy number three i'm gonna go with a 25th figure only because oh almost made my list my preferred version of lady j in this color scheme um you know obviously with the javelin and the backpack and all that so yeah yeah um yeah this this one is i you know my original lady j is is great but this is you know i, I want to see an o-ring figure that is based on this and yeah the come on Sunbow. super seven yeah you know you know it's coming um number two I mean, come on. I would say everybody's favorite ranger, right? Because we all love our beachhead. And I mean, I don't know if he's mostly green, but I think he's green enough. Well, I think Dale is probably my favorite ranger. I mean, yes. that's like a greenish brown. <laughs> well, he's got, yeah, he's got he's, green in the camo. He's got the and he's green got... camo. I think yeah. he's predominant. He's yeah. predominant. And I say, you know, mostly everybody's ranger, but not mine. 
because my number one <laughs> yes pa pardon pardon the missing crotch piece so there. oh no Unfortunately, oh my <laughs> we thought only lady stalker. j was the dirty stalker, one stalker cover yourself I, I i have another stalker that is not on display that this one but this one right now is the unfortunately the crotchless one so yeah, that's my top it five greenish figures. That's the Fredericks of Hollywood stalker. <laughs> uh, all right, I will. I will follow that up. And I've actually got a kind of a, a bigger selection over here because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. These are not necessarily in any specific order. I'm just going to go through what I got. Although this might well be my number one because it's the first one that I picked. Oh great, I'm blurry again. My camera is sorry. Uh, all right. The jungle bat. This is not just possibly my favorite predominantly green figure, but I think this is one of the best GI Joe figures ever made. Uh, the camo green, uh, the green camo on the bat looks incredible. Uh, it's of course, traditional bat styling with the different little, uh, you had the optional plate on the front. You had one that was not damaged, one that was battle damaged. But that is just a, a gorgeous variation of the bat. And one that I'm kind of surprised wasn't one of the first ones they went to. But I think probably because of deco hits. Because mm -hmm. the crimson bat and the arctic bat both going to be cheaper to produce than this one that's going to require a lot of deco. Uh, but I would love uh to see this in classified uh wreck ship 85 or actually we've got a couple in here what do we got kevin riddle says hit and run stalker muskrat rock and roll and grunt yorktown joe says footloose leatherneck lady J, and silly green firefly okay yes. so if I owned that Firefly, which I do not yet, but he is on my list, that would have been on my list. That would have been on my uh, green list. Foot, Footloose was my alternate number six. So, Oh, I missed it. I was trying to catch it. Footloose, is, <laughs> there he is. Yay. Yeah, he, he's definitely a solid choice. As a matter of fact, he was a close contender with uh, one of my other ones. Uh, and then Wreckship85 says Beachhead, Stalker, Grunt, Kamakura, and Lady J, who is almost exclusively green. That is true. All right, what do we Only got? Only in clothes. Next up, I am going to go with the greenest of the green, <laughs> the most offensively green figure in the history of G.I. Joe, and I love him. And now the camera won't focus on him, but sci-fi is, and I, I did have to decide whether I wanted to choose the original or the 25th version or Emmy version or whatever the heck it is. But this original just looks so perfect as is. Uh, and as we all know, sci-fi watches Transformers cartoons while laying in his bed in full uniform. So what's more charming than that? Uh, number three, uh, I'm going to go with another modern era 25th figure. I got to stop turning around. That's what's ruining my camera. The Lieutenant Falcon from the Slaughter's Marauder. Now it won't focus on anything. No, just put your hand behind it again because it's trying to find what it wants to focus to. Well, it's not well, doing a very good job of it. Come on, camera. There we go. Okay, so uh, Falcon from the Slaughter's Marauders set. What is happening? I'm just going to look like <laughs> I have Vaseline on my lens for the whole rest of the show. Dave's beauty filter. Right? Yeah, I've got. I'm I'm softening the edges too much. There, there we go. go. Uh, really nice camo. A lot of contrast in the camo on his pants. Uh, interesting green, and they went with a little different look for the Slaughter's Marauders colors. It's not quite as hideous as the original figures were. Uh, so I'm a big fan of this one. Oh, I turned around again. I can't turn around. I've just got to. I've got to blindly flail behind me to find the figures. So that's three. We got to go with. This is the one that I kind of thought all of us might pick, but I wasn't sure. Look. 
if there's a greener Joe than hit and run, I don't know who it is. Great figure, great accessories. Uh, just everything about this one is good. But from head to toe, well, not quite to toe, from head to calf, nothing but green all the way. This guy is not getting pinched on March 17th. Uh, and then finally, just to keep some variety in my choices, classified rock and roll who uh, ha- has a dash of minty green in the middle of his other, I guess that's really more of a Kelly green. It certainly isn't an olive drab. Uh, but again, lots of green on this guy. Great figure. Uh, was one of the best figures of the year last year. Love this figure. All right, Christian, I'm going to put you up on the big screen so I can hopefully not fade into fuzziness okay. again. Okay. So my first pick, uh, the reason why I picked him, and it is the Walmart Grunt, uh, Retro Series Grunt. Yes, yes. Is because great figure and so heartbreaking because this was the wave that made me go oh they're gonna they're gonna do more in the three and three quarter size and look they're really improving and no so and you know you know what else besides him being uh predominantly green those lips say kiss me i'm irish they do indeed <laughs> because they painted them very deeply uh, so next, and I tried to go with figures that I thought they're not going to pick, and I should have known Noel better because, <laughs> yep, well, copperhead. That's, that's a different copperhead, and true. I was going to mention this. If I were to pick a copperhead, I'd pick that one because the one that Noel chose, I considered to be more teal than green <laughs> aqua I mean, there are, there are multiple greens in there i see one green the rest is teal and and <laughs> let me just tell you how much my wife and i argued when we first met she had a honda civic that i considered to be teal and she it, it was green to her and i was like that's not green that's teal so next, I have... <laughs> Kristen is thoroughly unimpressed. Just by moving this, on. This color. Uh, <laughs> next, I have the... And I didn't pull any of the accessories, by the way. Oh, I that's fine. Derp. Unless um, they were green, we don't need them. The 25th anniversary style breaker, uh, because I was so excited at the time that I finally have a breaker that has his own face. Yeah. And is not sharing with like eight other guys. All right. So now my number two. Yeah. Fiona. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> she is still one of the greatest animal sculpts. I mean, obviously. We've said it before, classified has knocked it out of the park with all but one. Um, so, yeah. And lastly, and I am surprised nobody picked this because it does not. I'm sorry, Dave. It does not get any greener. And I'm so glad I got to go last. Then Beachhead's Weapons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people hate so, them so much. And they're sticking wah, around for the, the retro version. <laughs> yeah, that's that was an interesting call. Like, I understand looking at the original and thinking, well, if we're doing a retro that's supposed to be like the original, we got to keep those weapons green. But uh, I don't know. I mean, did if, you see Lenny's answer? in that chat about it because I mean, oh no they didn't, I, I haven't even they read didn't, the other stuff they didn't come out and say like you know why are beachheads weapons green they just pointed out like why are some of the weapons not you know black or have deco on them to make them look like weapons oh, and right. not gray. Not gray. 
like the original. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's not green. It's, it's gray. gray. I'm thinking of yeah. Duke's, Duke's stupid gun. But he he said, "Hey, weapons come in all shapes and colors in the real world, so they do on Joe as well." I so that's a fair answer. Can't argue with that. Beachhead just likes to go by Power Ranger rules and be <laughs> matchy matchy. I didn't look. The green weapons never really bothered me that much. I I didn't have a big problem with those. Ritz Murphy in the house. My brothers, I made it. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Everybody go check out Ritz Murphy on Instagram. Uh, I just check out the music. I love it. It's awesome. I have I have converted some Ritz Murphy fans uh, or, or some people to being fans of Ritz Murphy. Uh, awesome stuff. Glad you're here, buddy. All right. With that, Luck of the Greenish draws to a close. Oh, wait a minute. Wreckship85, listen, clearly Lenny is going by Call of Duty weapon customization <laughs> rules. I have never played Call of Duty because I'm just not a fan of first-person shooters. Uh, can anybody explain? I guess you can just make weapons whatever colors you want. I don't know. Yeah, well, at least, um, like, they just announced uh, Warhammer 40K skins for the for Call, Call of Duty. Duty? For Call of Duty characters. Okay. And yeah, and so the weapons now your Call of well, I guess your Warhammer guy has. It's like an interesting mix between the two. It it's not fully a 40 like the Space Marine Shield is not fully a a 40k shield. Um it's like a clear riot shield. Almost. I don't know. It looked very interesting as far as that's a mash up. Well, in uh, I don't play Fortnite, but my son does. And thinking of that makes me think of the weapon skins in Fortnite, where they have a standard weapon, but when you get a certain character, there'll be a skin on it. Like, as I don't know, I don't think this is a thing, but as a for instance, if you got Ghost Rider there would be a Ghost Rider skin for the weapons that put flames and a skull on them or something like mm -hmm. I'm, it's probably a similar type of thing. Uh, all right. That brings us to what does that bring us to? Where are we? We're at sound off. This is the segment of the show where everyone gets to participate uh, if you are a member of audiblearmy.com, you will get priority in telling us what to talk about here on the show. Uh, but if you're following us at Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram, we will put, a, put up a sound off post every day that we're doing a live stream. And you'll have the opportunity to tell us what you want us to talk about. Uh, so to kick things off from audiblearmy.com. From Wreckship85, who happens to be right here in the chat tonight. It's hard to believe, but G.I. Joe Sigma 6 will be turning 20 years old in September 2025. Uh, I would like to put the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade gif here, uh, where he crumbles to dust. <laughs> since it's over a year out, there technically is enough time for something to be made and classified from that show, since Lenny did say nothing <clears throat> is off the table. I'd like to hear each of you choose one character design you'd like to see be made in classified series style from the show. That's not too hard. We, uh, I've already got mine. That was oh, okay. Go ahead. Super easy answer. The sky bat. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We've talked about, I this, held on to that figure for the longest time and I regret selling it off. It's a great, great design. Uh, Maybe. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was thinking like for classified style, you might have to get rid of the elbow pistons that stick out, but otherwise jetpack rockets i mean he's a deluxe figure see you saying that makes me want to kind of change my pick i'm not going to 
But if you remember, after we reviewed the Sigma Six episode, I went and got myself the was it Toxic Glow Zartan or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that in classified, but that that feels like a cop out answer because we've got so many Zartans. It would just be a repaint. I think we would want something a little different. Oh shoot, where did my image I had an image to share and apparently I didn't put it in the slideshow. Um it's a character they made for is it Lieutenant Stone? Mm hmm Okay. Oh no no, I changed my high tech. High tech was the guy from the show that seemed to stand out the mm -hmm. most, seemed to be one of the headline characters that was uh I mean, he was clearly meant to be one of the central characters in, in what we reviewed. And he's different enough. He's interesting enough. And they did a version where he had some kind of cool yellow and green tech camo. He had a little spider drone and all kinds of weird technology rigging stuff. Uh, but whatever the case, I think high tech is a character you very easily pull forward into classified. I went with existing characters and just the versions of them from the like actual anime, which I don't even think they made figures of a lot of the characters that I actually like the character design from. Um, but Scarlet was my first choice because I like the way that they present Scarlet. Um, yeah, in the, mm -hmm. in the Sigma Six, I like that. I like that that red and black um, outfit she's wearing. And Jinx is another one that I like that look as well on her but again i don't think they ever made figures of those so it's only based on the animation i thought i remembered reading somewhere that they had made it to the prototype stage with scarlet to be in that next wave but they mm -hmm. got the call that it was canceled before they even made uh you know like a painted copy uh wreck ship 85 you're here who who do you want to see Tell us, uh, tell us in the chat here. Who do you want to see from Sigma Six? Yeah. I am having pulled up Yo or uh, Yo Jo. I want to see full frontal Duke in Classified. Excuse me, frontal we assault all, Duke. Front frontal assault. We already assault got Duke. full frontal uh, <laughs> at the Oscars on this show. Come on. Oh wait, he was Cena. Wasn't Duke? I see in my head for some reason there's a correlation between John Cena and Duke and Channing Tatum. <laughs> I know that's not a thing that exists, <laughs> but now I'm thinking of full frontal John Cena from the Oscars. They, uh, they should have just made uh, uh, the character from the Bumblebee movie Duke that John Cena played. Uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, so, yeah, Google frontal assault Duke. I just want to see that ridiculous cannon he comes with. Uh, the ridiculous cannon that full frontal <laughs> Duke is wielding. <laughs> we, should, we should move on. Uh, we're not we're not reviewing any Deke tonight, so no, no Deke tonight. Uh, Sean I'll McCarthy, you, I I my runner up in case one of you guys had picked the Sky Bat, of course, was the Sigma Six Shipwreck, and not because he's my favorite character. It's because he comes with a monkey, and we could just make macaque jokes again. It's true. Because that's what our podcast has devolved that's into. That's what it's turned into. <laughs> I can't even imagine what's going to happen at Toylanta with a live crowd to urge us on. It's going to be chaos. Uh, Sean McCarthy from AudibleArmy.com. Podcasts are everywhere now. Pick a podcast team from the Joe or Cobra ranks, maybe a mix. What is the name and focus of the podcast? Thanks for doing what you guys do. Yo, Joe. I am going to take an easy out here. Well, I don't know if it's that easy. Uh, my podcast is Gung Ho and Roadblock. And they argue over cooking. <laughs> because Roadblock is actually, of course, the, uh, the chef. But Gung Ho established Cajun Appetites he is going to want everything to be blackened and that I'm sure offends a real chef to their core. Uh, so yeah, it's just those two arguing about cooking. All right. Well, unfortunately for the Cobra side, 
our podcast only lasts one episode <laughs> before it's gone. And the name of that is Supreme. And it only <laughs> exists because when Serpentor heard that Joe's had a podcast and not fully understanding what it is, he needs a podcast. But his ego won't let anyone else sit in with him. So it's Dr. Mindbender running tech <laughs> while the Pintor just rants and raves and doesn't understand. Of course, people want to hear what he's saying and hear about his history because he knows better than everybody else. <laughs> Stupid, puny peasants. And yeah. <laughs> The ratings are bad, and one episode. So for mine, I mean, I kind of went a little easy because, you know, there's a there's a lot of nerd talking head podcasts out there. So for mine, airtight, sci-fi, and mainframe, but it's done in like the style of like a Collider style podcast, or more, more on the point. It's more the Red Letter Media Nerd Crew parody of the Collider podcasts, where they're just sitting around, like, pretending that they're not just getting paid a lot of money from all these studios to shill for them, and just saying, very cool, very cool the whole time. I didn't understand any of those references, but I'm sure it was all, <laughs> I'm sure it was all very, very good. I have faith in your pop culture knowledge. <laughs> Real quickly, uh, Rex Ship gave us his answer, and holy F, I just looked this figure up, and uh, yes, a hundred times yes. Well, what what is it? It is the Dark Ninja Master. Oh, my goodness. It Whoa. looked like... It's like a Spawn figure. That's nuts. What? Like the first Arkham Asylum Joker, like, yeah, that is bat s crazy, and I I love everything about it. He has a sword made of throwing stars. He has kung fu grip, according to the packaging. Uh, two different masks to go over. He's he has treasure troll hair. <laughs> Is there is this the first and only G.I. Joe figure to have treasure troll hair? <laughs> I am gonna have to I think to, so because everybody else just has ponytails. I am gonna have to I mean when I say treasure troll <laughs> hair, I mean this action figure literally has soft goods hair. Right. Although like, now in an alternate universe of... I want a guile figure that has the treasure troll. Hair from the Street Fighter line. I'm down with that. <laughs> uh, he has a loincloth that you can store daggers in. Uh, and and I mean, I, I mean, granted, everybody pretty much stores a dagger in their loincloth, but uh, this seems like something a little different. I am going to have to. He's got. Look at his toes. He's got toes. This thing is nuts. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to have to track it down and buy one because. Uh, my toxic glow Zartan needs a friend. And this, yeah, I, gotta, this, I need to keep watching the sick. And, this and looks like this. a. Uh, this is very reminiscent to me of like a small soldier's character. One of one of the uh, I can't remember what they're called. The monsters. The first thing I saw thought of was the um, New Mutants. The warlock figure that Toy Biz did. Oh yeah, back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in, like in the nineties. Uh, let's see. Robert I, I like Streben this. says the podcast will be called "Cutting It Up." Doc Lifeline and Scalpel talking about war wounds and such. I mean, <laughs> I would listen to that a hundred percent. All right, moving along. Our pal Gary from the Dragon Con American Sci-Fi Classics Track. Everybody check out Classics Track on Instagram and Facebook. We have the Ballad of G.I. Joe, Fumbles from Robot Chicken, the OSI from Venture Brothers. What's your favorite humorous take on our beloved, highly trained special mission force? Uh, and you hit it. It's OSI. For, for me personally, that's far above and beyond. Like the, the level 
of parody that Jackson Public and Doc Hammer have, are capable of, they they can do satire that is so well executed it becomes its own mythology and that's a talent that i don't know i've ever seen in any other facet of pop culture there there is there's just nothing better than the venture brothers uh and osi is look the well you guys i'm sure noel i think i probably can guess what yours is but osi to me is the best gi joe parody ever Noel, am I right? And tell me what yours is. I think I know. Well, I just I just actually Googled to see when it was released, and we're about to hit the ten year anniversary. And now I'm going to go and fade away, just just turn to dust. Right. Of course, I am referring to GI Jeff, the yes. episode of Community, um, which to me is a masterpiece. It's perfect. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Um, and and honestly. One of the reasons OSI wins for me is because it was so long running. It ended up becoming a part of the show and it lasted. Whereas GI Jeff is, is a one shot, but it's perfect. It's yeah. absolutely perfect. Everything about it. It is hilarious, but it also shows a deep knowledge of GI Joe. And to me, that's where, that's where the heart of satire lies is not just in poking fun at something, but also in displaying that you do love that something. And G.I. Jeff absolutely does that. Well, and Dino Stavitopoulos wrote the episode. And, I mean, you know, he he has to have grown up with, I mean, right, he was right. a little older, you know, but I'm sure he grew up with G.I. Joe. You know, he has a fondness for it. And, and he's absolutely brilliant when it comes to translating things from pop culture into, um, you know, into new formats. Uh, and for anybody doesn't that doesn't know, GI Jeff is an episode of Community uh, that is animated, completely yep. animated, aside from the the bookend stuff, uh, and it's it's perfection. If if you just go on what it's was it on Peacock, probably maybe Hulu. Uh, Community uh, is on, on Netflix right now it, as well. Yeah, is it on, on Netflix? Netflix? Go Mi- on Netflix. Minus, minus the episode Advanced Double Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, what? Yeah. Why? Yeah, there's there's, there's a reason why and it's it has to do with a, a makeup that one character is wearing in that episode. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Professor Chang's Dark yeah, Elf yeah, is what yeah, keeps okay. it from being on Netflix. Yeah. Oh wow, that's weird. But it is on Amazon. It was on Amazon Prime last I checked. Uh, but anyway, yes, the GI Jeff episode of Community, definitely. Oh, here's a good pick that I don't know that any of us uh, grabbed was decadent dave says uh, world Pol- team america world police yeah <laughs> which i honestly hadn't really thought of as a gi joe parody but there are definitely elements of gi joe there and yeah. that's what when we reviewed our last episode i was definitely thinking world police not just because of the teams the, the theme song for the deke uh show <laughs> but also while they're like in this museum um they're like, let's just blow up everything just to keep Cobra from getting their hands on it. It's like, yeah, it's 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 Team America. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, all right, Christian, well, what is your favorite? My pick was the E Bombs World PSAs. Yeah, and that was another that one. Still sticks with me to this day, and there are certain lines that are just part of my vocabulary. So now, I. Did Evom's World just post them without credit like they did everything else, or did they actually originate there? Because I, I mean, it was the Fensler Films that did them initially. But I, I only knew them where... from when my GI Joe friends uh, showed us one night on Evom's World, and that's how yeah. we remembered it. Instead of just saying like the GI Joe PSAs, it was like we knew specifically when you said Evom's World. I yeah. feel like Fensler Films didn't even. Like I was aware of of those long before I knew what a Finsler film was, but I don't know where I don't remember where I first saw them. Even mm. I'm sure we could look it up, but uh, we've got more show to do. <laughs> come on, no sci-fi. Oh, wait a minute. What? What? Is it? Will R? Come on, no sci-fi guys. We've talked about sci-fi a couple Multiple of times, times in the show. What are you looking for? What are you looking for, Will R? What did we leave out about sci-fi? 
He's green and he's wonderful. <laughs> uh, all right, moving along. Scale model Joes. This is this is a great great question. It has not come up before on the show, and it's something that I don't think we've ever talked about amongst ourselves on the show. Uh, so Scale Model Joes from Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram says, how do your spouse's partners feel about your collecting? How did you roll it out to them initially? Um, I'll start this one just because mine is very easy. Uh, I met my wife when she was managing a comic book shop. <laughs> there was nothing to explain. She knew why I was there. Uh, it took zero time at all for her to know about the insanity uh, that is my toy collecting. And it was not any kind of problem at all. As a matter of fact, she she has facilitated my toy collecting every step of the way. Uh, she looks for stuff for me. Uh, she, is, she is aware of like what a lot of the stuff I get from Super 7, she gets for me for like birthdays, Christmas, whatever. Like she, she knows my Super 7 collection pretty well. Uh, so not complete non-issue here well not even non-issue because i'll show her new stuff that i've gotten and be like oh check this out look at you know look at the likeness on this and and as as toy collect because i we met in 2004 we got married in 2005 and obviously over the last 20 years toys have evolved to an amazing degree so as portraits have become more advanced as articulation as everything else has become more advanced she's been interested every step of the way as to like oh they can do that now or look at you know the the mcu figures kind of actively creep her out sometimes because she's like that looks too real i don't like it uh so yeah we we have fun it's it's encouraged and it's all good my wife um when I met her, four hours of us meeting each other, she was at my home looking at my Lego room. Um, obviously, she didn't run. Uh, that's That was uh, 11 years ago. Well, real quick, real quick, elaborate on, because when you say your Lego room, your Lego room is a little bit more of a Lego room than I think a lot of people might recognize. Elaborate on what you mean when you say my Lego room. So I have a room. Actually, this is um, the room I'm in right now is my Lego slash toy, like hybrid room. But at the time, I had a, a room that was essentially just dedicated to Lego. I had, you know, tables that were set up with my Lego city. Um, I had shelving uh, that went all the way around that had, um, this is this is my Lego city as uh, from kind of a not great angle right here. Um, but... Uh, yeah, she she was not put off by it. You know, she also knew that I collected some other things. I didn't have anything but a few transformers really on the shelf at that point. Um, she also collects some things, um, not obviously not to the degree that I do. Um, she collects things like enamel pens, but she's also got some toy collections. She collects. Uh, she, there's um, uh, a vendor that we always get stuff from Dragon Con at when she's there uh, called Handmade Stuffs. Um, oh yeah yeah she's yeah. fantastic yeah we have a lot of like she has a I've, lot of her little plush figures i've got her uh, i've got her lemon grab and her skeletor okay yeah yeah um we have the largest one that we have in our collection is she's uh, it's like a seven foot long sandy the sandworm from B yes 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 so yes. that was that was a gift for me to her one year so yeah she's she's got a lot of the um the the star wars um Oh, what were the ones that were kind of the cutesy female character line they did a few years back? Oh, yeah. The, the, here was it Heroes of the Force? It was something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. But they were, you know, they were the stylized, um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Doll style, but, you know, she's got several of those. The Leia's, the, um, uh, uh, Ray, um, you know, she's got a bunch of those. She's also got like, she's got a Jen Erso figure. She's, and actually, hey, you know what? I went and pulled this out of her uh, her hobby room uh, because this is actually her Lady J figure. She's well, got that's a few of and those. that's specifically the Lady J that she cosplayed as. Yeah, yeah. So she, of course, she's also she's the commanding officer of my garrison and the finest. So she's obviously into doing nerd stuff with me. Real quick, uh, I want to check in with the chat. Wreck ship eighty five. 
uh, says, my wife calls Zartan bad belly shirt guy, and she couldn't believe her eyes watching Shipwreck and Snake Eyes use Satin's clothes as disguises in one of the, uh, in the one POD episode. But she's cool with it. Uh, Decadent Dave says, remember the Argentina Satan figure, Red Storm Shadow, which seems out of context, but international stuff, not as much my thing. I mainly know that because there is a user on his tank called Satan Ninja Koo, which is apparently related to that figure. You guys know international figures better than I do. Yeah, I'm you, not familiar with I would have to look it up. We'll have to look it up. Uh, Joe Hunter 73 says, hi, fellows. My wife is in full support of my collection. She loves going to shows with me, mainly to watch people. OK, yes, that is the thing. If you if your significant other, if your partner is maybe not as into the toy collecting stuff as you are. The one thing that every single one of them loves doing probably is people watching, sell them the people watching. <laughs> she collects shoes. I collect Joe's uh, scale model. Joe's. Thanks for sharing guys. I'm glad that wasn't too personal a question. No, not at all. It's very little is going to be too personal here. Uh, if you listen to a few episodes ago, we extolled the virtues of uh, playing with uh, macaque. So obviously we'll talk <laughs> about anything. Uh, okay. So Christian. All right. And I will be right back. So I have, I have never uh, hid my collecting hobby from anyone uh, that I've gone out on dates with. Typically, if things start to look serious or let's say by the third date, like if they ever comment about my collection, I have some rules of life. They're called Fluffy's Rules of Life. And rule number four, if you want relationship with me, is make me love you more than my toy collection. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm dead serious. And there are plenty of my friends that will tell you. I have told people that, and that would typically be the last date. Uh, but I I have had a few that did enjoy going to conventions. But for the most part, uh, yeah, no. They're into their thing, and I'm into everything. <laughs> so, and... Uh, it, I had my first roommate when I moved down to Florida. Um, he, when he saw my collection growing out of my room, that's when it was decided that we had to start going from two bedroom apartments to three bedroom apartments. So most of my collection until I bought a house was always confined to one room. And I mean, it doesn't bother me at all because i spend all my time <laughs> in that room so well and to go yeah. back to to pre meeting my current wife um right, my only wife i don't know why i said my current wife <laughs> pre meeting my wife my apartment was always covered with my collection like there was no i didn't like keep it hidden in you know in a cupboard or anything like that it was always out and, and, I was, and you guys when he says out uh like the kitchen island he had was just like lined <laughs> with action figures <laughs> yeah it's true it's a fact like i never because i because i knew that toy collecting and, and toys were just a, such a huge part of who i am that if somebody couldn't accept that then they, they weren't worth my time like this, this was never even a, a question. It, so it was like it, out in the the living room, the bed, everywhere. It was it was all over the place. So there was no there there was never any subterfuge on my part. It was you walk in the front door of my apartment and you see exactly who I am, <laughs> which is well, kind of how I am anyway. And I will say because I'd mentioned before uh, the year I graduated high school, that year for Christmas. I'd asked my parents for the second wave of the X-Men figures. And my mom was like, aren't you at an age where you'll, where you will stop asking for toys? 
flash forward to after I moved down here to Florida, not only did my mom finally understand that this is me, uh, she would actively go to yard sales and estate sales uh, in Kentucky and Indiana. And if she, there were G.I. Joe's, Star Wars, He-Man, X-Men comics, she'd buy them and That's wait till awesome. I'd come home to visit. So I have had people that are supportive for sure. No one really, you know, says the toys are me because they know they'll lose every single time. <laughs> That's right. That's why Rodimus keeps me warm at night. <laughs> uh, Yorktown Joe, besides Gabriel Kelly, a.k.a. Barbecue, what other Joes or Cobras could descend from Irish heritage? Well, you missed the one who actually has the Irish accent in the cartoon. When he's not yelling pork chop sandwiches, which is a Timothy P. Hanrahan himself, blowtorch. Who who's straight out of what Tampa, I think though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, I don't yeah. I don't know that anybody jumps out. This was I, I there's one like well, G.I. Joe collector club figure. Well, there's there's Coils of Doom and then there's um oh what's her name? Um, Crimson Asp. Crimson are... Asp is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. They, they okay. are. They're... Wait, wait, wait. Let me clarify really quick. Crimson Asp, Asp is not the one I was thinking of. Crimson Asp is the one that came up when I looked this up earlier. I'm not okay. going to pretend that I had any idea who Crimson, <laughs> Crimson Asp was. Although I do think we've talked about her on the show before. Yeah, yeah. Well, the others that I think, uh, Shanna M. O'Hara, uh, Scarlet. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then potentially Cooper G. McBride. Uh, he is an MAC and not an MC, so more than likely he is Irish and not Scottish. Uh, that will be low light. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I'll take that because I could, I, I'll be honest, I, I couldn't dig too terribly deeply into this one. I had uh, two. Okay. And the first one, I absolutely put way more effort into it than I probably should have. But I thought, you know, what Joes are from New York, because the history of New York with immigrants had a huge Irish population. So looking at which areas, which Joes were born in New York and which of those areas were actually lower income. So I came up with heavy metal as probably being of Irish descent. Sure. And then I picked Thunder as being Irish. Why did I pick Thunder? Irish. Irish. Uh, <laughs> I picked Thunder because of course I slugger. She's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Tank drivers. Tank drivers could be Irish. Uh, Decadent Dave says Major Blood, and I'll tell you that Sebastian Blood does sound Irish, doesn't it? Uh, Kevin Riddle says Cutter, going with the red hair. Joe Hunter 73, continuing that, says any Joe with red hair. Uh, and Ritz Murphy says Ripcord. Uh, original version. Uh, original flavor Ripcord, of course. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. And with that, you guys, I can't believe it. Already, once again, we're out of show. We've That's covered everything my. that we have to cover. The only thing remaining is for me to say, everybody check out audiblearmy.com. I cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. Last week's episode was a barn burner. If you dollar ninety nine, last week's episode alone, the video version is worth your dollar ninety nine. Go check it out. Uh, 
watch it. And as soon as you, if you look around audiblearmy.com at all of the other bonus content there, and you're like, eh, I don't see where this is worth a dollar ninety nine. Cancel as soon as you're done watching last week's episode. Go ahead and cancel. I, you know, that's that's totally fine. But please just pay dollar ninety nine to watch last week's episode. It is awesome. I promise you, you will not regret it. Uh, you will get my show notes before each episode is released. Which, by the way, means as soon as we are done with this live stream, I am going over to AudibleArmy.com. I'm posting the show notes. I'm posting the audio version of this episode ad free. Uh, you'll have early access to all GI Joe reviews on the needless things, YouTube channel, GI Joe and GI Joe adjacent. Uh, you'll get exclusive reviews, looks at vintage figures, things that I unbox that do not make it to YouTube. They will just be at AudibleArmy.com. I actually started a new YouTube channel that is only for audiblearmy.com content because I'm going to be putting up so much stuff. Uh, it just can't go on needless things. You'll get the opportunity to vote for content for the show. You'll get early access to audible interlude merch. So much stuff, $1.99. Uh, go check out audiblearmy.com. Noel, why don't you tell us a little bit about the finest the finest, as I was talking about just a few minutes ago, is a uh, is a GI Joe costuming club. Uh, of course, we are all over the world, but specifically, we have a garrison right here in Georgia that is going to be at Toylanta uh, next weekend. So, if you're coming out to Toylanta, not only will you get to see Audible Interlude and uh, a live. A panel, a live recording of an episode, but you'll also get to just drop by our table. Uh, we're going to have some cool swag. You can donate some money to a great charity called Canines for Warriors and uh, come talk about uh, G.I. Joe and costuming. And if you ever thought about joining up, uh, ever thought about, you know, dressing up in, as your favorite Joe or Cobra or adjacent character, check out the finest CC.com or the finest recruitment center on Facebook. Are you leaving and your costume as a surprise for people to see or, or, I'm leaving my costume as what can I grab pretty quickly on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> what, what what am I comfortable enough to wear and what have I not gotten too fat to fit in? Well, and I will throw this out there as enticement, not just for everybody listening or watching, but also for Nolan Christian. Uh, Audible interlude will be in uniform for this live episode. So just consider that. That'll be a first. Christian, where can we find that toy photography you do so well? You can find me on Instagram at Flickr.com under the name Legion Cub. Uh, and again, everybody, please check out AudibleArmy.com. I'm telling you, last week's episode, the video version is so worth your time. Uh, thank you for being here in the chat. <laughs> Noel and Christian, thank you guys so much for hanging out and talking about G.I. Joe. It is the high point of my week every single time we do it. Uh, we appreciate everyone who, who just hangs out with Audible Interlude. You guys are the best. You guys are a big part of why we do this. Uh, obviously, our love for G.I. Joe is the biggest part, but uh, being able to, to share this G.I. Joe time with people is absolutely incredible. Uh, next live stream is April the 1st. Between now and then, we will have another audio episode where we will review some comics and do some segments. And until then... Yo, Joe. Cool.